Welcome to Real Life Psych. After reading through some of the comments, I saw that a handful of you guys wanted me to discuss autism, ADHD, and other spectrum disorders. So today, we're gonna take a deep dive into autism spectrum disorders and ADHD and kind of look at the similarities and treatment options for each. Hopefully you guys can learn some new stuff along the way and it'll be a fun video. I'll see you guys after yeah. the break. Welcome back everyone. Thank you for your dedication to my channel and our little YouTube community. To keep this going, I have to do my usual plug. Please like and subscribe to our channel so that you can catch all our content as soon as it comes out on Sunday mornings. We so appreciate you and your feedback. And specifically, I wanna reach out to one fan in particular who also happens to be my neighbor, Jonathan. He has been such a cheerleader and it's been so great to get direct feedback from him. It's also quite crazy that he lives in my building and how we found each other and that we're so close in proximity. Um, so with that guys, let's get back to business. Autism or autism spectrum disorder refers to a broad range of conditions characterized by challenges with social skills, repetitive behaviors, speech and nonverbal communication. The term autism is the umbrella of autism spectrum disorders or we can just refer to that as ASD. There is not one single type of autism, but many different kinds. According to the CDC, about one in 54 children have been identified with ASD. And ASD has several conditions that used to be diagnosed separately, which include autistic disorder, pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise specified, and Asperger syndrome. ASD did not always exist and was coined in 2013 when the DSM-5 was published. But let's take a look at the timeline of autism and how it happened to look in pop culture and history. I found this really cool article that created a timeline over the past 70 years regarding autism. Let's start in 1908. The word autism was used to describe a portion of schizophrenic patients who were especially withdrawn and self-absorbed. In 1943, American child psychiatrist Leo Kanner publishes a paper describing 11 children who were highly intelligent, but displayed a powerful desire for aloneness and an obsessive insistent on persistent sameness. He later names their condition early infantile autism. In 1944, a German scientist named Hans Asperger's described a milder form of autism, now known as Asperger's syndrome. The cases he reported were all boys who were highly intelligent, but had trouble with social interactions and specific obsessive interests. In 1980, infantile autism is listed in the DSM for the first time. The condition is also officially separated from childhood schizophrenia. In 1987, the DSM replaces infantile autism with a more expansive definition of autism disorder, and it includes a checklist of diagnostic criteria. UCLA psychologist Eva Lovis publishes the first study showing how intensive behavior therapy can help children with autism, thus giving a new hope to parents. In 1988, the movie Rain Man was released. It starred Dustin Hoffman as an autistic savant who has a photographic memory and can calculate huge numbers in his head. This was very important for raising awareness to the public of what autism looked like. And although not every kid on the autism spectrum has these kind of skills, it gave a representation of those who did. And in 1991, the federal government made autism a special education category public schools began identifying children on the spectrum and offering them special services. And finally, in 2009, the CDC estimated that one in 110 children have autism spectrum disorders, up from one in 150 in 2007. Now that we have some understanding of the development of ASD and what it is, what does it look like? Individuals with ASD have difficulty with social, emotional, and communication skills. They can display repetitive behavior and might have challenges of paying attention while in school. Here's a list of some behaviors someone with ASD might display. Not pointing at objects to show interest. 
not looking at objects when another person points at them, having trouble relating to others or not having interest in other people at all, avoiding eye contact and wanting to be left alone, having trouble understanding other people's feelings or talking about their own feelings. ASD can be difficult to diagnose. Professionals often rely on observing behaviors and receiving behavior reports from teachers, guardians, and basically whoever works with a child. I've included the DSM-5 diagnostic criteria in a link below so that you can take a look and a deep dive at the criteria to meet uh, ASD. Before looking at treatment, I also want to take a deep dive into Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, also known as ADHD. ASD and ADHD are two separate disorders. Some of the symptoms that can be seen in ADHD can also be seen in ASD and vice versa. And a few examples are difficulty managing emotions, social awkwardness, the ability to focus on things that interest them, and impulsivity. Scientists believe they share a common genetic link, which could explain why their comorbidity is common. So when a child might have difficulty staying still or focusing on an assignment, we quickly make the jump that they must have ADHD. However, any psychological or developmental disorder of childhood can look like ADHD with or without the hyperactivity. Kids under stress, living with learning disabilities, anxiety, depression, even trauma or sensory problems can all exhibit symptoms that resemble ADHD. Approximately 9.4% of US children between the ages of two and 17 have been diagnosed with ADHD. And there are cases where ADHD and ASD can occur at the same time. According to the CDC, 14% of children with ADHD also have ASD. Interestingly, the American Psychological Association was against diagnosing a person with both ADHD and ASD. However, until the DSM-5 was published in 2013, they stated that the two diagnoses could indeed co-occur. According to Healthline, in a 2014 review of studies looking at the co-occurrence of ADHD and ASD, researchers found that between 30 to 50% of people with ASD also have symptoms, symptoms of ADHD. Researchers don't fully understand the cause for either condition or why they occur so frequently together, but conditions may be linked to genetics. One study identified a rare gene that may be linked to both conditions. This finding could explain why these conditions often occur in the same person. So let's talk treatment for both ASD and ADHD. The most important first step is getting the proper diagnosis. As we've discussed, this can be tricky, but by going to the right professional can be done. Pediatricians, neurologists, developmental behavior pediatricians, child psychiatrists, psychologists, they can diagnose both ADHD and ASD and help with assisting an individual with their symptoms. Additionally, an occupational or speech therapist may be needed for those with ASD in addition to an educational therapist for those with ADHD. Behavior therapy is often used to treat both ADHD and ASD. For children over the age of six, medication is often recommended for those with ADHD. Medication can also be used with individuals with ASD depending on their symptomatology. There are no cure-alls for these disorders. However, research shows that early intervention treatment services can improve a child's development. Early intervention services can also help children from birth to three years old learn important skills. Services can include therapy to help the child talk, walk, and interact with others. Overall, ADHD and ASD are lifelong and can be managed by treatments that are tailored to one's specific needs. Research continues to be conducted looking at the connection of ASD and ADHD. Even looking at how far we've come over the past 70 years gives me hope that more information will continue to be discovered regarding the ASD diagnosis. I hope that you all learned something new from today's episode and enjoyed the visuals that came along with it. Though this might not be a topic that hits close to home to you, I think it's always important to learn new things and challenge our thoughts on existing stereotypes. As always guys, please leave a comment in the comment section below about the content you're interested in and we'll do our best to make sure that we cover it. Have a great safe week and we'll see you next time.